of our research students approached the Centre for Migration and Diaspora Studies with a really great idea to put on an event that would bring together, celebrate and foster the work that our PhD researchers are doing around migration, mobility and borders. So then with the SOAS Journal for Postgraduate Research and with also some support from the RESRC Doctoral Training Partnership, UBEL, we were able to organise a one-day mini-conference um, and it was really brilliant to learn about all the different kinds of research people are doing um, within their projects and mobility is a really kind of interdisciplinary theme so we were hearing about issues in migration and society in South Asia through to uh, migration and culture from, from West Africa to South Korea, through to things about migrants' experiences and policy responses from Latin America to Europe and other, other parts of the world. So we had a really fascinating day. There were some really great presentations, for example, around issues around honour and migration in South Asian communities in the UK around how the diaspora is involved in financing infrastructure development in Nigeria and um, also some really interesting work on um, internal displacement in Colombia and how people cope uh, people's survival strategies in that setting. My project is about uh, what the academic literature calls the externalization of EU borders, which basically means uh, the way that the EU gives money and resources to countries outside the EU to um, prevent unwanted migration into its territory. So um, if you think of the EU giving uh, finances and support to the Libyan Coast Guard or the EU-Turkey deal that was struck in 2016. Um, it's about the effects of these kinds of agreements and deals um, on, well, states that are signatories, but also on migrants within those states, um, and specifically um, in the case of Mauritania in northwest Africa. So that's where I was doing my field work, and um, that's what my um, case study of externalization is. So in Mauritania, where I was doing field work for the majority of its history, the idea of an illegal immigrant or an undocumented migrant was um, somewhat of a foreign concept. Um, it was never a policy issue or a so social issue until it became an issue for the European Union when um, migrants began arriving on Spanish shores from uh, Mauritanian territory. Um, so what I wanted to investigate was how this um, creation of the, the policy problem of illegal Im immigration affected migrants in uh, Mauritania. So speaking to migrants who work in the informal economy and uh, civil society organizations, I found that um, the massive increase in deportations of people now, um, even people who had been in Mauritania long term, um, but who had now been uh, presented or uh, constructed as illegal immigrants um, had a massive effect on their um, sense of belonging in the country, their uh, livelihood prospects and um, even relations with employers. It's been indis indispensable, I would say. Um, the project would not have taken the form and shape that it has were it not for, um, well, the supervisory committee that I have, the um, colleagues that I have in my cohort, and um, the broader uh, just environment and ethos of SOAS. I found it really, really supportive. So 
my research deals with examining experiences that migrants have of digital government. So this includes like government websites, government apps, um, so anything, any kind of communication that the government does online with migrants uh, in terms of accessing government services, uh, things such as like applying for uh, water, um, housing, etc. Uh, so I, I examine those things um, using ethnographic research. I'm discovering quite a lot. Um, my research spans uh, two cities, so I look at London and Seoul, and I'm finding kind of similar and different things across the board there. Uh, it's interesting to see that kind of London and Seoul are considered leaders of the digital government, and that's why I kind of wanted to do a comparative study, especially because the two cities have very different migration contexts and history. Uh, and I have found that um, similarities in terms of the two kind of digital government system is that I feel a lot of or I've heard that a lot of people find that the systems when they're being developed uh, kind of are developed in silos and uh, that more people would like to see better communication so that uh, the, the platforms can be developed in a more holistic and kind of communicative way. Uh, that's one of the findings that I found. I've really enjoyed it and I really, and that's one of the reasons why I came to SOAS uh, from the States in the first place because of the expertise SOAS has in migration and I, I find that the kind of encouragement of interdisciplinary study here quite good uh, in terms of my research because I'm of the belief that development happens not just in kind of traditional development areas but all over uh, across multiple disciplines and I really have benefited a lot from the fact that uh, my department and the school in general kind of encourages this kind of interdisciplinary communication. Uh, so for example, we have like meetings throughout the year with other scholars and researchers in the field and just having kind of those casual meetings themselves and talking about, you know, the new areas that people find uh, relevant for migration research. Um, and, and to hear all of the new areas that people uh, do their research, for me, is like very interesting as a researcher. Yeah. Uh, the title of my project is Pariah Then, Brides, Wives, and Mothers. Um, pariah then is a term that's used in Hindi, um, mainly in the Indian subcontinent. That means, uh, it translates to belonging to someone else. Um, and it's used um, with reference to girls or women. So the outcomes of the project that I found is um, that Firstly, we cannot box these women into these categories or victims and survivors because they're very limited. Um, by looking at the stories um, and by really tracing their memories and understanding how do they connect their past with their present really shows that this, you know, their transition process from being a pariah then to also then being a Musafir migrant woman and this is a term that I have coined in my work uh, Musafir meaning um, a traveler or a guest um, and and you know joining that with um, their identity as migrant woman um, I find that this really encompasses um, a broader spectrum of who they are and their situation as someone who doesn't really belong anywhere um, but they're constantly trying to build that sense of belonging um, in in process of you know relocating and regrounding and moving around um, so it's, it's very much about you know looking at their stories to see how um, they articulate bride management and bride mobility in this situation Speaking about my specific department of gender studies, I think the kind of courses that we offer, the modules that we have, um, the kind of um, sort of skills that we are able to acquire from these courses um, and, and training that we receive um, within and outside of the department um, has been really, really useful. Um, so constantly talking about our work, um, having sort of peer-to-peer -peer connection 
um, having um, opportunity to, to attend a lot of seminars that happens across the school, um, the doctoral training programs that we have, um, which are more you know geared towards sort of applied training and applied knowledge has been really, really helpful. Um, and I think also just, um, just meeting people from meeting students from different departments and looking at what they're doing so this you know um, when I say this I'm thinking about conferences that we hold in SOAS or conferences that SOAS sort of advertises to us that are in our sort of neighboring universities right um, I think that really helped